who are going to give up a beautiful Saturday afternoon to sit in a uh, dark conference room to learn how to take back your state and our country. So thank you for being with us today. I want to. Um, I'm Eric Telford from the Franklin Center for Government and Public Integrity. We're a national organization that puts uh, investigative reporters and state capital news uh, reporters all around the country uh, looking at the decline in journalism over the past decade with uh, more than 10,000 reporters who've been laid off. Our job is to make sure that the public gets the information uh, that they deserve, that taxpayers know where their money's being spent, and that we empower citizens like yourselves to hold our elected officials more accountable. Uh, so I want to welcome Christine Morabito from the Greater Boston Tea Party, who had approached us about coming here for the event, so it was uh, her idea and all of her hard work that made this happen. And we're really excited to be here in a state that's certainly going to be consequential this election cycle, uh, with so much going on, and with so many great citizens ready to get trained and, and active. So with that, I'm going to welcome Christine. Be here because I knew it was going to be worthwhile for you. We're going to be imparting upon you some very, very valuable information. We have, a, you know, a great speaker um, a speaker set up for you, and um, I think you're going to have a great time. It occurred to me that starting today, the Tea Party is going to be saving or creating new jobs, <laughs> and by that I mean we're going to be doing the jobs that the mainstream media won't do. As you very well know, the mainstream media is doing an abysmal job of informing us on what's going on with our tax dollars. I live in the Merrimack Valley, and our paper of record seems to think that a front page story should be a couple of cows busting into a, a, a beer party. That was on the front page of their, of their paper. Very cute, but it's not news. Uh, we're lucky enough in the Merrimack Valley to have an independent paper called the Valley Patriot. Tom Duggan is the president and will be, he'll be joining us later today to talk about that. But he's been doing some wonderful investigative reporting that the mainstream media in our area has, has not done. Um, for six years now, he's been investigating Chair, our, um, Mayor Willie Blantigua of Lawrence. For six years, and only in the past couple years, has the mainstream media been reporting what's going on. Um, also, he's in the middle of investigating Sheriff Frank Cousins, um, the Essex County Sheriff, who's a um, nice guy, but he's corrupt as all get out. And the Eagle Tribune refuses to report about it. Um, when they, when they were, were approached with some of the stories that, that um, Tom was approached with, they said, you know, they like Sheriff Cousins. so. Which basically means that they endorse him and they, you know, contribute to his campaign. So, um, anyway, we need, we really need to know what's going on with our tax dollars. We need to get some of these stories out there. You're going to learn how to do some of those things today. Um, I met Eric in D.C. at the um, CPAC. It's a, a conservative conference that they have every year in D.C. And when I saw this presentation, I thought we've got to get them here to Massachusetts because we, you know, I wanted to show the people in D.C. I tell them all the time that. You know, don't write off Massachusetts. You know, they do it all the time, right? We are, we're a small group, but we're mighty, and we are fierce. And I think if we didn't think that we could turn this state around, I don't know if we could get up in the morning, frankly. So um, I'm really, really excited about, about the program today. Um, one announcement I wanted to make was um, make sure that you pick up a little, there's a little flyer out of the, the registration table that has some information on True the Vote. And it's a, a program that we are joining with an organization in Texas that is going to help us clean up our voter rolls, which are in great need of, of cleaning up. Um, they, they've had a very successful program in Texas, and they want to share that with the rest of the country. So um, I, I, you know, we're trying to build a Massachusetts team, and I really encourage you to, to get on that team. So pick up one of those flyers. and. Um, and register if you if you think you would like to do that. And I think that's all. I, oh, we, we're giving away some door prizes. We'll probably do that after lunch. So um, you can step out of the table and, and pick up a ticket if you'd like. And I think that's all I have. Great. 
Thank you, Christine. Thank you. you should all have a copy of the uh, agenda in front of you, and you can take a quick look through so you get a glimpse of the kind of stuff that we'll be covering today. Before I go into uh, holding elected officials accountable with social media, I'm going to talk just a little bit about the Citizen Watchdog program, what it means, and how you all can get involved, and how you can put the training that you received today uh, to good use. So, Take a glimpse at the agenda. I think we've got a really exciting program. Uh, many great folks that I'm looking forward to hearing from today, and hopefully you are as well. You should also have a copy of our Citizen Watchdog Handbook. Uh, this gives you a lot of the principles and tactics and tools and resources uh, that will help you get involved and be effective as a Citizen Watchdog and a Citizen Journalist. So that's a handy resource to keep available. Uh, if you have your own Tea Party groups or uh, organizations that you want copies for, let us know. We can either get it to you electronically, or we're happy to ship copies out to you. Our job is to get it in many hands as possible and get as many citizens involved uh, in these efforts as we can. So anything you can do to help us with that would be greatly appreciated. I'm going to kick off here, bear with me for one moment. Here we go. Out of curiosity, how many of you here are from the Worcester area? How many of you came from other parts of the state, far away, over an hour? Oh wow! Well, thank you all. That is uh, very encouraging. All right, I've got this fixed, and we can get started. Great. So I just want to kick things off by talking for a minute about um, how what we call. Uh, information activism, basically citizen journalism, how it's been transforming the political landscape and how all of you can be a part of that. We kicked off this program in January at the Franklin Center. Uh, we've already been across the country with about 15 or 16 events training close to 2,000 citizens like yourself to get involved. Uh, we did this because we saw a huge opportunity. There were unprecedented levels of citizen engagement between uh, the Tea Party, you know, even on the left we see the Occupy movement, Citizens are getting involved again uh, in government and public policy and politics at levels that we haven't seen in generations. And in fact, we see it all around the world. I think if you uh, look at what's happening in the Middle East with the Arab Spring, where citizen journalism is actually driving a, a democratic revolution, it's manifesting in powerful ways. And I always say, if people can do this under brutal despots in the Middle East, there's no reason we can't assert our rights in an open and free society uh, to take back our government as well. And I think our founding fathers sought to establish a country uh, where the government should be more afraid of the people than the people are of the government. I don't know that that's the case anymore, but that's the balance that we're hoping to restore. The other thing that I think is important is to look at uh, what we're up against on the left. The left is pouring millions and millions and millions of dollars into efforts for people to do this on a professional basis. I think at the end of the day we'll win because we have volunteer enthusiasm. We have people like yourselves who, who care and are getting involved. Uh, and that means a lot more than money, but we are up against a substantial challenge. There are efforts like Think Progress, which is a project of the Center for American Progress, a George Soros-funded think tank in Washington, D.C. Now this is a uh, quote-unquote news operation, at least considered by much of the mainstream media to be a legitimate media outlet uh, that has a few dozen people whose job it is to go to every single Tea Party event, every single uh, right-leaning organization's uh, rallies, uh, conferences, and things of that nature seeking gotcha moments, sticking cameras in people's faces, trying to get them to say embarrassing things, trying to make us look foolish and, uh, and derail our efforts. Uh, there are other efforts like American Bridge 21st Century, and this is a project that, as they describe themselves to the New York Times, seeking to track every center-right leading candidate across the country running for federal office, uh, capturing every comment they make, every handshake they make, trying to uh, force them into gas that will prove embarrassing that they can use uh, for TV advertisements, uh, to help elect officials that they view as more friendly toward their cause. And patch.com is an effort of uh, AOL, which of course uh, is now under the, the news operations now under the guise of Ariana Huffington, who we know is certainly not friendly to the cause of limited government. Uh, but they spend $160 million a year on hyper-local news. And that's what I think is probably the biggest challenge that we're up against. We see this huge decline in mainstream uh, media journalism over the past decade of the 60,000 reporters in the country, more than 10,000 have been laid off. Uh, but efforts like this are pouring more than $100 million a year into focusing on hyperlocal news, what's happening in your local community, 
uh, whereas traditional newspapers, uh, the, those reporters are being laid off, let go, and no one else is covering it. So it's being covered from a skewed perspective, and that's where you as uh, citizens hopefully can step in, and that's what we'll learn about today, how we can fight back against that. We call it information activism because we view it as a lot of people who can do a lot of different things and working together can make a big difference. So we don't expect everybody, we know you have jobs, you have families, uh, you have lives, and you already give so much of your time to activism. Uh, we want to make sure that we're maximizing that and, and not um, causing any more angst with your families or causing you to lose your job because you're giving too much time. We think that everybody has a unique skill set. and Maybe somebody is really good at investigating. Maybe you love walking into your town hall and saying, I want a copy of the budget or I want some of these public records. Maybe you're really good at writing and you can help write up the stories that somebody else uncovers, but they don't have that strength. Uh, maybe you have a background in PR and you can help pitch these stories to talk radio and other news outlets to make sure that more of the public becomes informed and aware of the news that should be covered by the mainstream media, but simply uh, isn't. And maybe you're really good at recruiting other people and you can be a force multiplier and go out there and get other people involved. So we, we view everybody as having a unique skill set. Our job is to put all of the pieces of the puzzle together in a way that helps us achieve the big picture. And so that's what we want to find out. Where are your strengths? How can you be involved? And how can we deploy those in a way that advance the overall cause? It's what the blogger Glenn Reynolds calls an army of Davids. And it's really millions of ordinary citizens, rather than using slingshots, using laptops, flip cams, and cell phones to take down the goliaths of big government and big media. Uh, there's an example here I'll use in a moment, but it's, it's very much like the American Revolution where folks like Ben Franklin and Thomas Paine uh, used newspapers and pamphlets to get a message out to the public to circumvent the establishment and rally people toward making a real change. Uh, the big question we always get is, this all sounds great, but is it really effective? And we'll delve into this more in some of the presentations today. But I can tell you it absolutely is effective. First of all, it drives mainstream media coverage. We've got a mainstream media that's either through bias or lack of resources not telling the story that needs to be told. But if you get out there on the ground and you start telling it, you start exposing that information, we force them to be accountable. Not only do we hold our elected officials accountable, we hold the mainstream media accountable, and we force them to tell the stories that taxpayers deserve to hear. It influences the public policy agenda. We know that the greatest threats to our freedom and prosperity occur when nobody's paying attention. It's at the local government meetings that nobody attends, nobody from the public, nobody from the media. As we start telling those stories and the elected officials start realizing people are paying attention to what we're doing, their behavior changes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, it increases and enhances activism. I can't tell you the number of times being all across this country, talking to great folks who've given so much of their time to Tea Party and other efforts who say, I've gone to the rallies, I've waved the signs, I've knocked on doors, what more can I do? I want to do more, I want to make an impact. And I think all of those things are important, but there's so much more that people can and are willing to do, and that's what we're hoping to give you uh, today. And it spreads our message to a broader audience. You know, at the end of the day, forget MSNBC, forget CNN, forget even Fox News. With the networks that each of you can build through social media, through other tools, through word of mouth, we're hoping to build a nationwide distribution channel where we can get a message out regardless of what the mainstream media says or doesn't say, or the stories that they tell or don't tell. And so that's something we're going to talk a little bit more about as well. I want to give you an example of how kind of citizen activism can make a really big impact at the state level. Now we all know that both Texas and Georgia are politically very red states. Both have Republican governors, both have Republican controlled state legislatures, both have two Republican U.S. Senators, and both have a majority of their congressional delega uh, delegations held by Republicans. But when it comes to new media activism and, and citizen journalism, Texas is actually more of a blue state. And that's because of a radical left-wing blog called the Burnt Orange Report. Now, a few years ago, I was in Texas meeting with the then State House uh, Speaker, who said that every time an issue of major importance was being debated in the state legislature, you could look from the back of the room across at all the legislators' desks, and they all had their computer screens open to this blog called the Burnt Orange Report. And a blogger from the site was sitting up in the gallery or sitting at home watching the state level equivalent of C-SPAN, live blogging what was happening. And the shocking thing that the State House Speaker told us was that as elected officials in one of our largest uh, states, they were no longer engaging one another on the merits of the issues and debates. They were getting in an argument with this blogger up in the gallery. He was effectively derailing the debate on major issues uh, for the state of Texas. That's a huge influence for one person to have. Now, Georgia, it's a center-right blog called Peach Pundit that wields very much the same power. And there's actually a picture from the back of the legislative chamber where every elected official has that blog open on their screen. But this proves the point that if you're writing about them, if you're uh, covering what they're doing, they're going to pay attention, and it's going to alter their behavior. You've seen this in states like Virginia and California as well. In Virginia, there's a blog called 
Um, you may all know the political pundit on TV, professor from University of Virginia, Larry Sabato. Uh, there's a parody blog in Virginia called Not Larry Sabato, uh, blogspot.com or something like that. Um, and he watches every major vote in the state legislature. And there have literally been times, and unfortunately he comes from a left-wing perspective, but there have literally been times where he will say, state senator so-and-so today voted out of line with the interests of their constituents, I'm going to make sure come election time that his constituents remember and they hold him accountable. And then he's emailed it off to the staff of that state senator. And there have literally been times where the, the staff have shown him on the blackberry as he walked out of the chamber and they've turned around and changed their vote. The same in California, there's a, a center right blog called Flash Report where he's done very much the same thing uh, to the same effect, altering the behavior of these elected officials, changing the way they vote, because so oftentimes, nobody's paying attention to what they're doing, nobody's calling them out on it, and all it takes is one of you in this room to do it, and you can make a huge difference. So talk a little bit about how our program operates. We've been around the country, as I said, doing 15 or 16 of these so far, training uh, more than 2,000 citizens, and we'll continue to do that. But our vision is not just in, in these training seminars and you know, then run out of town and say, good luck, you're on your own. Uh, we're building up the staff and resources to help you guys in the long term. So I hope you'll stay connected with us, I hope you'll stay involved, ask us questions, tell us where you encounter challenges. If it's, you know, I want to set up my own blog, but I can't figure out how. We've got interns who can help, we've got training resources. Uh, we are having webinars throughout the year that will focus a little more uh, advanced uh, issues and go a little more in depth on, on things that you hear today. But also let us know what are the things you want to learn more about. How can we either come back to the state and provide more training? How can we uh, host webinars that are on relevant topics that you'll find helpful? What are other resources that you want? Um, if you're running into problems, you know, somebody threatens you with a lawsuit, we can't provide you legal support, but we can steer you toward lawyers and, and things of that nature. We want to be a resource because our job at the end of the day is to make sure that each and every one of you in this room gets as involved as possible and helps you clear those roadblocks that might get in the way. Uh, so please, please, please stay in touch. Let us know how we can help. We've also launched a website, and hopefully I'll be able, if I can get connected to the internet, be able to pull it up later, watchdogwire.com. And this is a platform where each and every one of you can sign up for your own free, essentially blog on the site, where you can be a citizen journalist, where you can contribute, uh, where we can help you uh, become better and kind of track what you're doing. Of course, if you already have your own blog or if you want to start your own independent of that, we're not going to discourage you and, and we'll help you as much as possible with that as well. But if you want, we kind of view it as a place to start with training wheels. If you want to get acquainted, learn how to learn how to do it and have a platform where we've already got traffic and an audience built in, uh, that's a resource that we provide. Uh, so please do stay in touch. This is a program that we view as an enduring effort to stay connected with you guys and mobilize you and, and make you all as effective as possible. I'm going to talk a moment about examples of success because people always say, this is great, but I'm just a regular person. How can I make a difference? But regular people are, they're changing America, and here are some examples of how. There are two folks on here, I wish I had a laser pointer. Uh, in the top corner and the bottom corner, these are two now former members of Congress who are former members of Congress because of citizen journalism. I think we all know the Anthony Weiner case. I don't know if we need to go into the uh, graphic details of that. But the mainstream media was complicit in telling his lies. They were basically you know, stenographers who are just telling the public, here's what he says, we believe him. Thank God for people who are on Twitter, who are finding out this stuff, who are tracking it down, who are pushing the mainstream media to cover the story, and forcing him to eventually resign his seat, which was then picked up by a Republican for the first time in over 100 years. That's because of citizen journalism. That's because people were paying attention to what he was doing. They were calling him out on it. They were calling out the mainstream media uh, on not doing their jobs, and they forced a real change. Uh, and the top, I guess your left-hand corner there, is former Congressman Bob Etheridge. Now, we all know that 2010 was a huge year for Republicans uh, sweeping control of Congress. Bob Etheridge from North Carolina, however, was considered one of the safest Democrat incumbents of the cycle. Um, that was, of course, until a couple of college students walked up to him on a sidewalk in D.C. with their flip cams and started asking him questions, the kind of questions that the mainstream media should ask our elected officials, but they don't. And because our elected officials aren't used to being asked the tough questions anymore, rather than answering their, uh, the students' questions, he decided to put one of them in a stranglehold. And that's why he's now former Congressman Bob Etheridge, also known as the North Carolina Strangler. He uh, just tried to run for governor and then unfortunately lost his primary, but I thought that would, uh, that would have been interesting if you were the Democrat nominee for governor in North Carolina. You could say things like, well, strangle out of control spending, but all this. All those good campaign gimmicks down the drain. 
Um, Van Jones, I'm sure you're all familiar with as well. He was the uh, green job energy czar for the Obama administration. Not a single story was written about him by the mainstream media uh, until he resigned. The first story the New York Times ran about this controversy was Van Jones resigns from Obama administration. Now, of course, something led up to that. And that something was people like you all across the country digging into his records, vetting him. The mainstream media is not vetting our candidates. They're not vetting uh, these unelected bureaucrats who wield so much power. And that's absolutely critical. Folks, you know, citizens all across the country were sending information to Glenn Beck, sending information uh, to Andrew Breitbart, who were using their platforms to get that information out in a way that became a political liability for the administration uh, that forced Van Jones to resign. This is a man who was a self-declared communist who said that green jobs were a way to redistribute wealth, um, especially to black communities and former prisoners and things of that nature. Very radical leftist, uh, but the mainstream media gave him no scrutiny until he finally stepped down. And of course, Dan Rather, we all know that story as well. Dan Rather is no longer at the helm of CBS Evening News. We can all be thankful for that. Uh, but we remember back in 2004, the story he ran about President Bush's National Guard Service that used fraudulent documents. Now, CBS hired experts who attested to the authenticity of these documents, saying they were absolutely legitimate. Conservative blogs said, something doesn't seem right here. So they posted copies of it. And it was actually a gentleman in Montana who was a typewriter expert who knew that the typesetting used to create those documents didn't even exist yet in the year they were supposedly created. He commented on one of the blogs, the blogger picked it up, and then that forced the mainstream media to run the story. Of course, we all know we all know the outcome. But think about that in an age before the internet. I'm a typewriter expert from Montana, and I'm calling up the newsroom of CBS Evening News. You know, some intern answers the phone. They think, total crazy pants, you know, hang up. Public never knows. That never would have been possible before the age of the internet. People like yourselves all across this country really are transforming our political landscape, and it's so important that we stay involved and continue to do so. So our goals are to build a community of information activists at the state and national levels, and to provide the tools and skills for folks like yourself to mobilize, serve as watchdogs in your local communities, and spread our message to a broader audience.